Hey Misfits, it's Elise. Welcome back to our channel. So today I'm doing a tutorial on how to apply for jobs and what to look for because I'm going through that right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for another job. So yeah, this week is tutorials. Derek did a great tutorial on how to do laundry, which adulting sucks, but at least now you know how to do laundry. So I'm going to be doing that. I have no background in HR. This is just my own personal experience and it's it's what I know. So it's not 100% like accurate. I am not someone who's a hiring manager. I just I've worked a bunch of places and I'm on the internet all day applying for jobs. So I hope this is helpful to someone. Okay, first things first. If you don't have a resume, you need to make a resume. So there's plenty of templates online. I'll show you mine, but it's basically my boyfriend's um, template that he took from a class that he took in regards to a resume building course. He took one. I never did because, like, my college doesn't care. They just want you to have a degree. <laughs> so here's what I have. Now, I have a header, and it, like, has my name, a line, and then my contact information, so I don't want people calling me, texting me, or sending me mail. So <laughs> you have to have that first, right? Then you gotta, like, organize it in a way that, like, is simple and easy and not too cluttered because places don't like that. So, I put my college experience. Now, if you never went to college, just put high school. And you could do the same thing for, like, how I spread it out in bullet points. But, um, yeah. So, like, I went to the University of Bridgeport for four years. I have a Bachelor's of Music. A lot of employers want to see if you could finish something. So... Yeah, actually a lot of them want a degree in business, and they might ask you if you want to go back to school, like if you're doing retail or anything like that. I don't want to. <laughs> so at least I finished something. That's kind of what they look for. So, you know, I put that I was on the dean's list, and I put, like, some of my coursework, because, like, I was a music major, so, like, for me, I have to tell them, like, yeah, I'm not a SoundCloud rapper. So then I put my high school, and, like, Unless you go to a tech school or something, it's usually not as specific. So, like, I just put general studies and classical and jazz. So then you go down to your skills and abilities. Like, so I have management experience. So I put management type of things. Now, if you're just, like, um, this is all retail. But, like, say you're, um, like, you're a cashier or stocking or back room or, like, whatever you do. List, like, some stuff out that is relevant and will make them want to hire you. Like, for me, managing a team of cashiers, supervising up to 15. Hello. Communications with fellow peers and leaders, customer service management, cash management, retail sales, accounting, because I did do accounting. Um, evaluating and reviewing and coaching KPI, because that's just stuff I've done before. So, yeah. So, I worked for Walmart, and I still do currently, but basically, you gotta make yourself sound like you are the bomb diggity, and that you do everything, and that you're just very qualified. I'm trying to hide my location, because one time someone did get my address. So, I manage and oversee all cashiers and service desk associates, as well as self-checkout, and then Walmart has high standards for their customer service policy. I handle customer service relations and do my best to satisfy every customer and their needs. It's important to make sure any coupons or sale prices are valid. I handle all cash cash functions. I can read change for registers, cash office, accounting, and money deposit. Um, I also do overrides and provide answers to every question, whether it's a customer or an associate. So that's what I put. Okay, so this is your reference page. Now, it's going to say references at the top, obviously. So, I don't want people calling my references for no reason. <laughs> so, the format I use is pretty short and easy, like, because I'm, I'm retail. I don't really need a fancy one. Name, phone number, and relationship to you. So, like, I have my former boss, his phone number, and, like, what he was. Like, I put former supervisor. Um, so, that's really it for that, because... If you put, like, everything they need to know, like, just put a phone number, like, or phone number in an email. You don't need their house address. Like, if you do an online one, then they're going to ask for that kind of stuff. Like, save it for that. That's my recommendation. Alright, so that's that part. 
Now, I'm not like a resume like expert by any means. Hold on, someone called me. Oh, they didn't leave a voicemail. Not important. <laughs> so once you have the resume and you got all your dates for your jobs, if you've never had a job before, like list um volunteer experience and stuff like that, because chances are if it's like a retail, like, you know, they hire straight out of high school or like high school kids, you know, you're not going to really need a huge resume anyway. If you have people like you babysat for because like I remember my first job was Spirit Halloween. I knew the person hiring me or I knew the other boss, but the other boss at that store because it was my friend Jason and then a girl named Sarah. Sarah was the one who was going to hire me because Jason couldn't do it because that would be kind of like conflict of interest. But like it's Spirit Halloween, you know, it depends on the place. Bigger places like I'd say like big box retail like Walmart, they want you to have some sort of other retail experience like sometimes they just hire you on the spot like target was pretty lax but walmart wants you to have cashier experience from somewhere else so yeah so when i did spirit now this could be anything so you know i didn't have like retail experience i didn't have cash register experience i was fortunate enough my first job was actually in a library at my college i did that for a semester i, I hated it i'm gonna be honest with you <laughs> i had that on my resume so it's like she just was like well you've been employed before and you passed a background check and like it depends on the expectation of that store so i put that and then i had a phone interview because that's a different kind of store it's not as like big where they make you come in but obviously know all your dates and just like get all your stuff presented and make sure you're organized so now I'm gonna talk about applying to the job because that also matters that actually matters more to me I'm gonna be honest okay so the next part is like picking a dang place to apply to so you gotta like figure out if they're hiring or not so this could be on indeed or any job website or if you go on like a company's website and it says positions are open some places what they'll do how do I word this? Like, it'll say there's always, it's always open, but it's, like, never open. So, you know, figure out where you want to work. Um, and it really depends where you're applying to. So, I'm trying to find one that I know that has, like, a questionnaire to show you guys. Because a lot of jobs, when you apply for a store or anything, it's like, you know, you do all your information and you submit it and then it's like here's the assessment the assessment scores you and you have to pass the assessment or else they will not contact you at all you'll pass the assessment sometimes and then they don't even contact you because like they don't someone else was more qualified or they're out of positions and they're done interviewing like you know stuff like that so let me see if I could find one that has an assessment now I don't really want this job per se but Here's an example, Merchandise Associate TJ Maxx in Milford. Um, I have retail all over the board experience. I've done merchandising, cashiering, planogram, flow, unloading a truck, management. I've had all of that. So, you know, found your job, right? I go on Indeed because a lot of places nowadays just use Indeed or their website. Like, they don't really advertise anywhere else. So, you know, read everything, you know, make sure you can do these things. So look for requirements, because that's kind of more important. So customer service, you got to have good customer service skills. Be flexible, so that means you have to be able to open and close. That's important. Availability is very important. As a supervisor at Walmart, I had cashiers who would complain about hours, but they had terrible availability. So be open to come at open to close, please. Um, possess strong organiza organizational skills with attention to detail. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. That just means do a good job and get all the details right so like that could be anything across the board a bit work okay we did that Cap capable of handling multiple tasks at time so multitasker they're looking for a multitasker be able to respond appropriate appropriately i can read <laughs> um some changes in direction or unexpected situations so again flexibility and being able to handle anything thrown at you Capable of lifting heavy objects with or without reasonable accommodation. So a lot of places, it's like 25 pounds or 50 pounds, depending on the place. TJ Maxx, I want to say it's 25 pounds. Like, I don't think it's anything ridiculous. Because, like, anything that's super heavy, they're going to have equipment for to help you with. So just, you have to be willing to do it. That's all they really want. 
if you're someone who has a medical condition and you can't lift like that and you you make sure you have like a doctor's note or disability involved because you don't want to be like not hired for that reason uh what else possess strong communication skills well duh be happy cheery and help people stuff like that you know speak well capable we did that effectively working with peers and supervisors to accomplish tasks so if you say like you're a people person or you love working in a team beautiful and retail customer service preferred so if you have that experience under your belt for this job you can apply to this job so I'm gonna apply to it just for the hell of it so I gotta make an account I will be right back I had to make an account and think of a password, so here you would have to have your resume saved on Google Docs or something. Um, yeah, so like attach your resume. Now what I'm going to say is probably not the best thing to like recommend because I'm not HR, but this is in my experience. If you don't have a cover letter or you're not comfortable doing like a cover letter, just omit it unless it's some big fancy schmancy job if it's entry level they don't care about a cover letter like I don't know if that's like a thing but to me like if you sound like an idiot in your cover letter they're not going to want to hire you anyway so that's my recommendation all right so I put my resume in there I just saved it as resume for Walgreens because I recently applied to Walgreens and they gave me an interview so I saved that one <laughs> so then you got to put your name and stuff in down here. Know your social security number. Like, obviously, have all that information out. If you do not know it, please get that information. I'll be back after that part. All right, so now we're at the part where auto fills your resume. A lot of places, you, there, you either attach your resume separately or you fill it in like afterward or you just, it auto fills. Like, Whole Foods did this, Target did this, so... Know your dates. Um, I actually put in notice, so I'm going to be doing my last day as my end date. So for me, I did supervisor, so that's what was my position. If you were never a supervisor, don't lie, because they're going to figure that out. So then, Whole Foods, I started on the 19th, and I ended on the 5th of August. Because there wasn't a lot of hours, so you know, something like that. And I was not supervisor there. Oh, I started the 27th. Sometimes it defaults and you have to tweak it, so make sure you read this stuff. Alright, so then Target. I stopped working there the 19th because I started Whole Foods like that next day. Because I put in notice really quickly. Mm, no, I was a head cashier. That doesn't really count. Alright, then Spirit Halloween. I think I started the 31st? No, like the 29th? Yeah. So, obviously a couple days off is not gonna, like, mess up your resume. But know your stuff, you know. So then we gotta do my education and all that jazz they just want to make sure they know it's you and you're not lying so make sure you don't get it wrong on one of them I'm gonna fill the rest of this out and I'll be right back alright so now it's gonna say language skills if you're bilingual please put that there if you are not do not lie because they're gonna be able to tell um certificates now say you have like a certification in like CPR or like something like that please put that there I don't like, see, they have expiration dates. Like, I have something because I completed a course at the Walmart Academy, but, um, what is this? Oh, willing to relocate. Just put yes. And, like, do within, like, 10 miles. So that means it's, like, a town over. Uh, actually, no. If it's, like, yeah, let's just do that. So, if you're willing to relocate, put that there. Um... Most places say, like, within blank miles. This one does not, so don't worry about that then. What are travel preferences? Ah. If you do not drive, do not say willing to travel. <laughs> it's just going to stress you out. 
do you know anyone who works for TJ Maxx? So, like, obviously, if I don't, I'm not going to lie. So, I'm going to hit no. Have you ever worked here? So, no. Highest level completed. I have a bachelor's. I mean, you guys have that on my thing. <laughs> References, so I'm going to put my references in and I'll be right back. Okay, before I move on, for your references, if you have someone, a supervisor that is willing to say that, you know, you did a good job, this, that, and the other thing. Um, now, obviously, there's a whole lot with that. So legally in the state of Connecticut where I live, the, the employer can't talk crap about you, right? So you're you're safe with that. Unless you figure out that they did, then you can sue them. So, for your references, it's kind of different because you want them to give your strengths and, like, basically just tell them how good you are because, yeah. <laughs> so, for me, my former Target team leader in the back room is willing to be a reference anytime, you know. You got to get these people, get their numbers while you work there, you know, so that way you don't get screwed. So, I would recommend one former boss or current boss and then at least one person that worked with you. Like, I wouldn't do friend references because it makes it look a little sketchy. Especially, it's like, oh, how do you know them? Oh, I've known them since kindergarten. Like, you know, well, that's actually better. Like, I have friends that are online friends. I would say I would never give them a job reference because then it's like, you've never met this one person in real life. Like, so, don't do that unless you absolutely have to. But, like, for me, I do one coworker and one boss. And then, like, for if you need a third one, just do another coworker. So I stick to coworkers and bosses. Like, it, you can't go wrong with that. Now, be available. I'll work overnight. I don't care. If that bothers you, don't do overnight. Like, you know, make sure you're available. Because otherwise, these applications are scored. So it's like... If you have more positive things, I'm available at all day, every day. Skills. Now, this isn't something that's always on an application. But if you see this, like for me, I've done a lot of things. Fitting room, merchandiser, I've done cash office. Uh, i never done financial records or payroll. Cashier. I'm going to put all these things because that's what I'm good at. Actually, no. I haven't been maintenance as an actual job title, so I'm not going to put that. So, like, obviously do what you're experienced in. There are some cases, though, when it's like you've done it, but you've never had the actual title. But if you're good at it, by all means, put it on there. Like, for me, I, I was a head cashier at Target, but they never, like, made me that position. But I always subst it, sub what's the word? substituted and, like, covered it, like, three times a week. That's a different story. I'm thirsty. Anyway, this is crucial. So if you're a United States citizen, obviously put that you are. Cause they, if you say you're not and you don't have proof of residency, they're not going to hire you. Um, the, the sponsorship question's weird. I always put no because they might think you're trying to flee the country. If you are over 18, you're good. I'm, I'm okay to start the two weeks out. I always put two weeks from the date that I apply. Oh, that's a good question. Have you taken any merchandise, money, or property from an employer? Even if you did, please say no. I am not in the military. Don't lie about the military shit, because they will fine you for that. Uh, la, 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 la. Work all uh, the WOTC. Now, sometimes you do a survey and it just, like, tells you to do it and then it decides for you. This one says, I don't know. Is it this? Oh, that's if you're part of an agency. Okay, so I am not. That's, like people taking a cut out of your pay because you used an agency or um you know they just want to know if you've you've received government assistance because like if you still do or if you have then they have to like contact your your former employer same thing with unemployment so 
Don't lie about that. <laughs> so then I'm going to type my name and go to the next one. Okay, so I apparently don't have to do an assessment. I thought I would. Let me see if I could find an example. So that's just a typical one. You fill out, you put your resume in. Not all of them require a social security number, but I guess most of them do. I'm surprised this one didn't ask, but when you say they call you for orientation and you do your interview, um, then they're going to say bring that in so we can photocopy it and this, that, and the other thing. So that's that. Let me see if I could find an assessment online. All right. I just applied for another job that just called me back and said to do an assessment for something. So anyway, I found this website that has like fake or like versions of questions on retail assessments. So if you do retail or anything like that, this is a great tool. I've done so many and gotten jobs. I know like the answers, but this is good if you need to practice. I got to send this to my friend because she bombed an assessment. <laughs> right. So this is queendom.com. I need an assistant. So, if a customer starts an argument with me, I'd be very uncomfortable. So you gotta be like, I can do everything. I'm great. I'll I like call my supervisor. This, that, the other thing. Like I'll explain more. But like, you gotta be able to deal with difficult customer situations. Repetitive tasks are boring. Hit disagree, because <laughs> then they're gonna think you're boring or that you think everything's boring. There we go. I work well under pressure. Hit agree. I have a knack for tasks that require a lot of good attention to detail. Yes. Opinionated clients make me uncomfortable. I've never seen some of these, but they're just worded differently wherever you go. So, you know, you got to tackle everybody, no matter who. If a client was very forceful with me, I would stand my ground. Hit agree. I dislike having to answer someone who has more authority than me. Please hit disagree. I would feel shy or awkward trying to convince a customer to buy something. No. Nah. Because you want to be able to sell something. I work working on the same day of same set of tasks day in and day out would bother me. Hit disagree. And make sure all your answers, they're gonna repeat these questions. Answer them exactly the same. I misplace work related items. Never. I break down big projects into smaller steps, so they're looking for organization. I managed to complete everything on my to-do list. Hit yes. I put things back in their place when I'm done. Always. I prioritize. Yes. Say you're assertive when necessary. You're able to resolve problems at work. Now, obviously, if you're not this kind of person, <laughs> please don't take a job from someone else. Um, I tidy up my workspace. I give my time, skills, and knowledge freely. I've never seen a question worded like that, but basically you're good at everything. That's what they need to see, or else they won't call you. I find it easy to talk to complete strangers. Yes. I make friends easily. Yes. I would have make sure to have a response ready for any reason a client would give not to buy something. That's more for sales. Um, I really get frustrated when I have a lot of tasks. Hit no. And then hit false for dislike being told what to do because basically you got to be, I'll do whatever you tell me and I'll do it well. That's what they want to see. Um, I am comfortable putting a lot of pressure. This is for sales. This is like when I worked for Clinique, was going to work for Clinique. Good at controlling my temper. Yes. Comfortable dealing with conflict. Yes. Having my performance monitored makes me uncomfortable. Hit no, even though it probably does make you uncomfortable. <laughs> when I talk to someone, I put myself in his or her shoes. Yes, I will do whatever to make a sale. This is more for selling, but that's okay. Um, I may have missed some of the fine points. I finished just to be done with it. Hit no. I strive to work well with all my colleagues. Yes. I'm good at convincing people seeing my way. Yes. I'm striving to be pleasant with customers. Yes. If I, I, if I know I have a lot to get done, I will try to arrive a little earlier at work. Yeah. Just say yes, even though they probably won't let you. It shows you're willing to do it. Um, I will not give up. Yes. So, persistent. No matter what, I will spend all the time and effort I need. Yes. So, if there's a question saying you got to stay late to finish the task, put that one. If there's an answer like that. The go to build rapport on others, yes. Speak with confidence. I manage my time well because that's what they're looking for. 
Like, remember how the other one said, um, multitasking? That, that goes hand in hand. I pay careful attention to small things when I'm done complete, when I'm completing a task. Yes. Once I've completed a task, oh yeah, this is a good one. So, tackle another one immediately. They want a busy bee. Uh, blah, blah. When my work needs improvement, I feel motivated to do better. You can't let them know you have feelings. Um, when I'm wrong, I am not afraid to admit it. Please just say yes. I prefer making a sale with, I, I don't know, that one, that one's weird. You could do any answer for that, because I've, I, that one doesn't matter. No. So, like, that's a personality question. That's not as much as the other ones. A corker's often nasty to you and your other colleagues, makes more sales. One day you notice she hasn't claimed the commission from a sale she knows she made last week. Be honest, you know, if there's something like your coworker, be honest, you know, go to the supervisor, like one of those answers. Um, you've been assigned to train a new recruit at your work, young and inexperienced, your best way is to be slowly and clear as possible. After a week of intense training and note taking, you leave the new recruit to their own devices, not even two hours in, they come and ask you for help three times, what do you do? So, if you train these people, right, <laughs> you got to be very, like, precise and do it well. So, if they still ask you questions, you know, sit down and help them. Don't say, like, they're up to their own device because then you're going to not be a good trainer and they're not going to think at you. Have compassion. It's Friday afternoon and your coworkers have started chatting. Okay, so this is, like, when your coworkers are gossiping. What do you do? So, there's, like, a couple answers you could do for this, depending on the question. Like, this one, like, don't join in. Just say, like, you mind your own business and get your work done. Um, if there's another one, like, if they're crap, uh, shit-talking another coworker, hit, go get your supervisor, because bullying is a policy thing, so obviously don't partake in bullying. A client has asked for your opinion on a really expensive outfit... Blah, 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 you know. But how would you proceed? This is a tough question. This is a colding one. So this is like an honesty thing. Um, I would say tell the client if you're not 100% sure, then you shouldn't buy it. Like, cause that one, that one, you, they want to see if you're honest and like that you'll take care of the customer, like to the fullest of your capability. Cause even if it's like, they're not happy there, they'll be happy somewhere else type of question. So just be honest there. What is this question? Customers come to your store to return a dress you sold. Didn't like it. Not convinced of her story. It looks worn. Oh, so they're trying to return something that's clearly used. Okay. No. So call your manager. This is one of those questions. If it's a tough customer type of thing, just call your manager. Because they don't... If it's an entry-level position, they're not going to tell you, like, you have to, you know, fight them in the parking lot. Like, call your manager. Like... If it's a, t a decision question and it seems like it's more than just doing your job, call your manager. That's what I always put, and that seems to work well for me. One of your colleagues is preparing a display. She really needs to get it done, but from the looks of it, she's nowhere near to finish. You have your own tasks, but your manager suggests putting them aside. How would you respond? Okay. I wouldn't mind giving her a hand. I would have approached the manager and offered to help. So... This one, if it's a new task question, it's either ask your manager what to do next type of thing, or in this case, the manager already approached you, so just do what they say. This one, um, two inexperienced employees are assigned to work with you on a task. How do you feel? Glad to mentor others. So, because there's also questions like, do you work well in a team? Like, I prefer to work by myself or in a team like just put in a team 
Unless you're like in an office or something. Sarah and Anita are discussing a situation. One of the cash register was short $50. However, she found the extra money in one of the registers. She turned in the extra money to her boss. She was crazy to turn in that money, blah, blah, blah. No. Where's disagree? Okay, so you gotta read this one carefully. Like, there's questions like this. This is like the honesty questions. Like, if you saw your coworker stealing, what would you do? So, Anita, according to this story, turned in the money anyway. Sarah's saying that she should have just took the money. So go with the one who was honest. Okay? You gotta sound honest as fuck. So, is this like the last couple questions? Danny found out his coworker at the store makes more money than him. Oh, this is a stupid question. No offense. Uh, la, 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 la. He decided to level the playing field by bringing home a couple CDs he didn't pay for to give as Christmas presents. What? He would have never been able to afford the presents to give to on his salary. Yes, he was wrong. Yeah, so this one, they worded this really poorly, but it's a good example because a lot of these questions are very badly worded. So, yes, his situation may be bad, but he was wrong to take those things. So, like, if it says a thing like, call, uh, tell your supervisor that your coworker's stealing, tell them. Tell management, because if you're liable if you didn't tell them. So, that's a good one. Jill works in a clothing store. No, pro no raise, no promotion. One day she noticed the cash register has more money in it than receipts for the day. What should she do? Tell the supervisor. So, do not steal the money. Don't take the money. Don't do that shit. Be honest and don't steal. <laughs> she should, should she be, pu be punished if she steals the money and gets caught? That's a tough one. Because, like, fired or arrested is appropriate. I say fired, because arrested, it depends on the store. Okay, so I scored 100. <laughs> so, these are the types of things that they'll want to see, because they want to see good customer service, you know, figuring out when it's not your call and to call your manager, and just good work ethic. Now, obviously, you could just lie on the application and they don't know until they hire you but there are genuinely a lot of people who don't know how to answer these and they always get screwed when it comes to someone calling them back so that's that one thing i forgot so say you do all this stuff right you wait for them to call this is something i completely forgot about to put in so editor basically if you do not receive a phone call or an email or anything you can call like once and be polite about it and it's and you can say hi my can I speak to HR or something like that and you know they'll most likely they'll refer you to HR if not it's a leader and then you can say my name is blank I applied for the blank position and I wanted to know the status of my application and like they'll give you a probably a generic answer like, oh, we're going through applications right now. Just look out for that email. Um, X, Y, Z, you know, hope to hear from you soon type of thing. And then you hang up. Do not call and hound them about an application. Now, back in the day when my parents were kids, that this you had to keep calling, I guess, because they said that's how you got interviews. If you call more than once to ask the status of your application, like... They're going to blacklist you by default because you're too pushy. A lot of places do this. Target does it. Walmart. Like, most retail settings I've worked in, if you call more than once asking the status of your application, they're going to blacklist you. So, you just have to wait for contact at this point. Like, if you feel like two, three weeks went by, or more, like two weeks, yeah, you could totally call and say, can I ask about the status of my application? Like, do it once. Like, don't, don't call as soon as you do it because they see it hr is on their computer like all day looking at these things like just take it from me because in the past like when i was younger like i want to say like 18 19 years old when i just got a job like my parents would tell me 
you know, call them, ask them, blah, blah, blah. You got to be persistent. No, not in this day and age. You have to basically wait it out. And if it's like two weeks go by, then call, you know, then say, hey, um, you know, like what's the status of my application? And don't be too pushy or rude on the phone. Like I applied and no one's called me. Like, don't be like that because then they're not going to they're not going to interview you by default. That's just how it is. Because they could say legally that, oh, we found a better candidate, sorry, you know, or whatever it may be. So, be patient. Alright, I think that's it for this video. I think it's way too long. I'm going to see if I could cut it down, so. Thanks for watching. I hope this is helpful to someone. I'm looking for a new job, because I need to get out of my current job, if you catch my drift, you know. So, this, I hope this is helpful to someone. I, you always should look for new opportunities, and... My glasses are filthy, so I'm going to go clean those. Bye, guys. See you next week.